Good morning everyone and today we're going to look at how to create a simple scenario with a loadout for bar. So you always have to start off with making sure you have a uh, one thing installed for bar so that we can export the unit and feature loadout that we are creating so we can know where to place them in the scenario. In order to do that you need to open up your Beyond All Reason folder, navigate to data, and um, make sure you have a Lua, Lua UI folder. If you don't, create it. Inside that, make sure you have a widgets folder. If you don't, create it. And inside that, make sure you have this debug feature dump dot Lua widget right here. This debug um, Lua fe this feature dump is going to allow us to dump units and to dump features and later on retrieve them and copy them into our scenario. Um, this can be um, downloaded from the uh, bar discord from the scenarios channel. It's pinned right there on top of it. So make sure you have this in the correct path. The next step is to go <clears throat> into the lobby and let's create a single player skirmish game for the map that we wish to make a scenario for. So we're going to start off with this scenario and um, what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we are playing against a null AI so that it doesn't do anything. The inactive AI, the, this null AI, this does nothing, literally, and that's what we need it to do. We're also going to set up the start boxes so that um, I know that what I want is for the AI to be in the top left corner of this map and the player to start in the bottom right corner of this map. Okay, um, I think we have everything set up, and so we can we can start. Also, if you want to check out what the uh, scenario file structure looks like, then you can either go on to GitHub and take a look at what the individual scenarios look like by um, taking a look at the path to them. And each scenario consists of a Lua configuration file and it consists of an image that's used as a well flavor image for that individual scenario. For example, we have a flavor image like this. And we are going to base our scenario off one of these files. So we're going to play, uh, base it off this one, scenario 18, which is a simple um, scenario on the map Pinewood Derby but we're going to change a lot of things. So, once we're loaded and in game, we have our beautiful map, Glacier Pass by Isex, and uh, we place our commander and we hit start. So right off the bat, uh, let me quickly just disable music for this because um, it won't swamp the audio then. So right now, well, we see we have excellent snow and um, let's try we're going to have to use a couple of cheat codes to be able to easily place things and to make sure that everything is the way we want it to. So we're going to start off by saying slash cheat, and then we're going to enable global line of sight with slash global LOS. Then we are going to enable no cost slash no cost to make everything cost zero. That's going to make things cheap. And we are going to enable um, God mode so we can also order enemy units around. Okay, so we have everything. Note that we have the enemy null AI here, and since we're in god mode, we can order that around as well. So we are the armada in this case, and the enemy is cortex. Uh, well, that's a mistake. We're going to swap that around because I want it to be the other way around. So what I want this scenario to be is to have a player have vehicles and have and have him only have just a couple of units and make him move along this path to uh, destroy all enemy units that come that it comes across and to uh, make it a micro scenario where you have to um, micromanage just a couple of powerful units to get things started. Okay, well we're going to start off by placing a, a base here for the player and the player is going to be Cortex. And the easiest way to place a lot of structures is to just uh, get an air constructor. So you can do that with slash give, and we want a Cortex um, aircraft constructor, which is slash give core AC, core CA construction aircraft, slash give core CA, and we have our little construction aircraft. So let's build a quick base 
for us to start off with, I'm going to need a couple of solars, some solars. We're going to need an energy storage building. We're going to need a radar. We also want a radar jammer, just to make sure that um, this initial uh, base stays safe. And we kind of want the player to have this small base because it gives them a lot of energy and um, he, the player is going to need energy for his radar to work, for his uh, um, resurrection K-bots to work, <clears throat> and things like that. So let's also give this base some good defense. So in order to do that, we're going to give a core advanced construction aircraft right here and tell it to build some fortification walls around this. So we built some nice fortification walls. You can go completely nuts and, and actually make it look good. So you can. there's no limit on how many units there can be in a loadout or how many features there can be in a loadout. So just, you know, have fun with it. Let's also add some plop up fl flamethrower tarts to make sure that this area stays safe for the player. So where do we add these? Well, let's add them on every corner to make sure things stay safe. Okay, let's also give the player here a couple of uh, laser turrets just to make it absolutely sure that he doesn't get swamped by anything early on. Sure, you have your little base already. You can rotate units as well, and they'll be rotated when you load them up in the scenario, but I'm a bit lazy to do that. So what kind of units do we want the um, the player to have? So we're definitely going to want a couple of vehicles, a couple of Tier 2 vehicles. So I'm going to quickly cheat in a Cortex um, Advanced Vehicle Plant. I'm going to just uh, place it right here for now. Um, just slash give it. So we have, we're definitely going to want the player to have a Goliath. A Goliath is a lovely tank. It's a very heavy assault tank. It's got huge range, um, a lot of damage, and it can deal with a large army of T1 units. I'm also going to add one Reaper. The Reaper is going to be our support unit in this case, because um, Reaper has a lot of hit points. It's reasonably fast. And, uh, and maneuverable, and it can keep the Goliath safe. We're also going to want to give the player a radar vehicle so that um, he can see things and uh, move around more easily on the map. We're also going to give the player a jammer vehicle. This is going to allow him to make sure that his units stay cloaked. And we're also, what else do we need for him? Well, that's pretty much going to be the loadout, so let's place these here so the player knows what to use. We're also give, going to give him a couple of support units um, from the Kbot lab. So we're going to go slash give core lab, which is the core Kbot lab. We're going to give him three resurrection bots. Those will be useful in the long run. And these are going to allow them to repair, reclaim, and resurrect stuff. Okay. So we have our player loadout. So let's start off with the enemy loadout then. And so I'm going to give the enemy slash give the enemy an armada advanced construction, uh, just a regular construction aircraft. Now to give to the enemy team the last parameter of the slash give command, for example, give one, for give arm ca one is going to give it to the enemy team. So because team zero is me, team one is the enemy. So this is we can see it's yellow, so it belongs to the enemy team. Okay, let's make a little base for the um, enemy right here. Well, I'm going to give him another one because this might take a while to build. So what are we going to do? Well, let's lay some traps. What kind of traps can we lay? Well, for example, we can give the enemy right here a couple of um, cloakable metal extractors. These are going to be to provide a nice challenge for our player. Um, to actually kill these, to, to know that these are here, 
because um, these are going to are going to be what generate resources for the enemy, and the enemy is going to continuously make tier one units and um, try to swamp our small ragtag band of T2 units to try to kill us. I might add a banisher to this mix just to give it a banisher or a diplomat. I think a diplomat will be a nicer touch. A diplomat is a uh, heavy rocket launcher. It has a huge range, so it's going to be fun to use. Okay. So <clears throat> where did that construction aircraft go? Okay, we've built a lot of these. Uh, these are invisible despite being in a global LOS. That seems to be a weird bug. Oh, well, they're just not selectable. Okay, they're cloaked. So let's keep building the player's base. So what I want is for the player to actually, with his armada commander, I want the player to start somewhere, to have their commander somewhere hidden. So we're going to give slash give in armada commander to him. Good. Oops, wrong team. Uh, I'm just going to go and self-destruct this one with control D. And let's give it to actually team one. Okay, there we go. We're going to place him, hide him right here. Now, the thing to note is that with scenarios, um, you don't have to give a commander to both teams, even if the game mode is kill all enemy commanders, because if you start with zero commanders, then you don't immediately die. So if the enemy only has one commander and you have zero in scenario mode, that'll still work completely fine. So let's give also a Armada Advanced Construction Aircraft. Uh, wrong team, once again. Give it to team one. Okay, let's build some walls around this commander so that he doesn't run around and do stuff that we don't want him to, because we want him to stay here. So let's find the T2 walls, hopefully somewhere in the build menu. Right here, fortification walls, excellent. Okay, you can go ahead and make sure that he's well walled in, and also you can decorate it with anything you'd like. We have a couple of dragon teeth right here. Let's build um, a couple of dragon claws, pop up the lightning turrets around it. Okay, what we're also going to do is reclaim this uh, this dead commander right here because we're also going to dump all features because uh, we're going to hide a couple of features on the map. And these features are going to be something that the player can resurrect and hopefully use to their advantage. Um, also, we're going to disable building constructors for the AI so that um, it doesn't go out and reclaim the stuff that we're hiding for the player before the player gets to them. Okay, let's keep building a nice, nice, well-defended base. So since our player has a rocket launcher, a diplomat, the diplomat has a pretty large range, and it has access to this cliff, we can be pretty sure that since the player is also going vehicles, Let's take a look at the passability for vehicles. You click select the unit, hit F2, and you see the passability map. You see that vehicles really can only pass through this line that is indicated by this uh, this blue line here. It can't pass through here because these are purple. And they're too, too steep for them. You can click F2 to remove those. So let's build some defenses along the way. Let's start off with something easy. So what kind of easy things do we want the enemy, the uh, the player, to face starting off from his base? So it's just going to be some simple LOTs just to, you know, get warmed up and um, have some fun killing stuff. Just a couple of LLTs. Also give the enemy a radar. Mm, 
we're going to hide a couple of lightning turrets beneath this. And just to make things a little bit more difficult than usual, not well, this is, shouldn't be difficult, this is easy, just to give them some stuff to destroy and some stuff that looks good, we're going to hide some AA turrets right here. We also have these AA turrets. <coughs> Excellent. <coughs> Let's also build a small base for our AI. Mm, this base shouldn't consist of much. We want do we want the AI to go vehicles or K bots? I think both. I think the AI should build both in this scenario. So we're gonna give him a K bot lab. Uh, I don't seem to be able to rotate the building. Why am I not able to rotate it? It's probably wrong keybind. Which one was it? Rotating it. It should be. It should be. Ah, I'm s wrong keyboard. There we go. So we can rotate it with the um, bracket keys. We're gonna give him one Kbot lab right here. <coughs> and we're also gonna give him two nano turrets to assist in construction. And since this map is has reasonably variable wind, we're also going to give the AI a small wind farm right here. And um, the player can destroy these for you know extra destruction and making sure that uh, the AI doesn't have enough uh, resources. We're also going to give the AI another small base for making vehicles. We're going to place that here. give him two nano turrets to be able to rapidly build stuff, also build his metal extractors, and allow him some uh, some wind. Wind is going to be useful. Uh, I'm only going to give the AI wind in this case because I don't want, uh, I want the player to be able to exploit low wind conditions, and low wind conditions will help in um, killing defenses that have radar. Okay. Let's build some. Let's build a defensive situation uh, station here for the AI. I'm going to put a metal extractor here that the player can destroy to reduce the uh, amount of resources that this is generating. And also, I'm going to give the enemy a radar here, and I'm going to try to wall up this choke point very well for the AI. Also, I don't want the AI to build any bots that would... The bots can pass in uh, much more places on this map. The bots can also pass through here. But what I don't want is the, um, the enemy sending um, bots up this direction and accidentally raiding this base um, just to, to wall it off a little bit. So what, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make walls with the enemy player. Let's make some walls here. We have fortification walls. And let's double wall this up. OK, good. It's going to have fun building there. And let's turn off passability view. So we have a couple of LLTs. We want this to be a little bit more difficult to assault position. So I'm going to build a heavy laser turret here. I'm going to hide a couple of pop-up lightning turrets here. Give it a radar. I'm not going to give it a jammer because that might be a little bit difficult to use. But we're also going to give it um, just a small cluster of energy that the player can take out right here behind it. Give it another radar so that it can have fun with it. Um, hide some walls also. just for aesthetics. Okay, what kind of base do we have here? This base looks some reasonable so far, but it also needs some defenses. It's definitely going to need a radar. Let's make this base a little bit more difficult to assault, so we're going to cloak it. Uh, are we going to make a jammer here? Well, a jammer is going to be a very difficult to defeat here, so let's not jam this. Let's jam this main base instead because um, the player is only going to have access to one radar bot. I mean to one radar cart. Uh, we are going to hide some goodies in the ravines right here, that the and maybe in these ravines as well, that the player can resurrect and um, hopefully use to his advantage. So what else? 
let's keep building. You know, we want the player to have fun and have a lot of things to destroy. So let's um, build laser towers all the way through here. Make a nice cluster of them. Also add some heavy ones. Those are more difficult to destroy. And let's build a little bit more advanced defenses. Okay, do we have this wall? This wall is complete. So let's build some more along here. I want this to be difficult to assault. So let's get some walls up. So we have some walls right there. <clears throat> What's going to be difficult to kill? A pit bull is going to be very difficult to kill. In fact, two pit bulls are even going to be more difficult. Um, so they're going to need quite a bit of micro or clever use, clever usage of the um, rocket launching truck, the Dominator. And um, I'm also going to add some anti-air turrets here for decoration. And I'm going to hide a couple of pit bulls at the commander himself. Also, we can always place LLTs everywhere. All right, this T2 constructor can't build LLTs, but he'll get to that soon. So we have our ranges. OK, that looks quite sane. What has this huge range? Oh, that's our radar truck, right? Yeah, that's our radar truck. We have radar jammer. What else should the enemy have? This seems like a nice starting base. Uh, Maybe, maybe, I'll be extra clever and keep adding these cloaked metal extractors to these enemy resource points. Now, let's try to center them so that it, at least the player has a decent chance of finding them. And if the player is able to kill these quickly, he might even be able to use the rocket launcher from here to move yeah, he might use the rocket launcher to move it here and then clear out these um, these metal extractors quickly. Also, I am going to remove these three. Actually, I think I can just self-destruct them. Okay, I'm going to need this aircraft, so I'm going to place these exactly on center. I'm going to destroy that. Self-destruct that, self-destruct that as well. Note that these come with an EMP blast when they get destroyed, but we're going to place them dead center, just to be nice. Should we give the player some source of income? I don't think that uh, in this map, I don't want the player to have any access to anything besides maybe capturing this lab that would allow him to actually build anything. At least not from, definitely not from the start. So he should be able to clear out at least some portion of defenses before getting access to something more useful. So we're going to place stuff for him right here. Now that might result in the player reclaiming these walls here to just to get to these wrecks. So we'll think about that a little bit. OK, we have seem to have a nice map it's filled with all kinds of <clears throat> neat things for the player to enjoy what other tricks oh right we can lay mines and be extra nasty yeah we can lay mines i'm gonna lay some mines right here in front of this base so i'm gonna give it a slash give an arm mine laying vehicle to team one and let's place some mines we're just going to use a couple of light mines just to deter the player. Uh, I don't wanna, yeah, let's um, space these out and put them in a nice grid. Now, if we are going to give the player an arm mine laying vehicle, then we might as well yeah, it has the arm mine laying vehicle. Now, we should be careful to note that if the enemy builds a lot of bots, the bots will probably probably take this path right here. They'll probably go this direction. That's how the AI is going to control them, and the bots are going to go probably in this direction. So 
<clears throat> what we need is a player is some way for the player to make sure that he doesn't get flanked from here now in order to allow the player not to get flanked how could we help him do that i think what we can do is we can place a lot of resurrectable um features here that the player can build that will help keep this part of the map safe for him how can we do that <coughs> the easy way is to um just give rex so let's gonna give let's give the player some slash give i'm going to give him some arm pitbull underscore dead rex all right we have the arm pitbull right here we do need to do a little bit of code editing to make these resurrectable later on because by default features are not resurrectable so let's actually give the player three of them to, to give them a fighting chance against any um <clears throat> anything coming up and we can also give him give the player a I a radar here arm rad dead now, if the player destroys these wrecks or otherwise reclaims them, then that's that's his, his bad. That's his problem. He shouldn't. Okay, we should hide something in this ravine. What should we hide here? Um, hmm, what does Cortex have that could be very useful? All right, we also should give the player some spies. Slash give. I think it's core spy. Yeah, it's core spy. Give him three of these, because these are... These are very squishy and easy to kill. These give good line of sight. And uh, these are cloakable and stealthy. Okay, what should we hide here for him? I think we'll hide... This is just going to be a couple of dead things. So we're going to give him slash give um, arm rector dead. Yeah, that's that seems like a reasonable way to hide them. And so the player can actually grab a couple more things. Like most of these ravines should be passable towards bots. Let's see, F2. Is it passable? Yeah, most of these ravines are passable. Oh, where is a construction aircraft when you need one? Let's see. Here's a regular construction aircraft. So let's wall this ravine off so the player doesn't have the... Oh, wait, this is... Yeah, this is good. So we're also going to hide some units for the player here. What should these be? Just some simple stuff. Maybe another dead arm rector. Let's also give him some arm peewees, just so that he has a fast... Actually, let's give him some arm fleas. Because those, while those are resurrectable, those do... Um, those do give the player the additional opportunity to scout things. Okay, so since this area has mines, we definitely do need to give the player a way to clear them, and only mine-laying vehicles are a surefire way of clearing these mines. So let's place a dead mine-layer vehicle somewhere so that the player can resurrect it and hopefully carry on with that. Uh, let's say little mine layer vehicle has slid into the ravine right here. Slash give arm MLV dead. Yeah, right there. Oh, the wreck for that seems to be old, not updated. Yep. But it doesn't matter. The player should be able to resurrect that, and the AI is not going to reclaim it. Oh, let's give the AI a nice geothermal power plant here in addition to all of its winds, because this, I think, can be cleared from the top edge. Yeah, this can be cleared from the top edge. If with the uh, with the Diplomat rocket launcher. Where's a regular construction aircraft for the enemy? And we have one here. So we're going to give him a geothermal power plant. Let's also give a dead one here, slash give core geo underscore dead so that the player can actually use this and you know get energy it's not going to be very useful i'm going to be very deliberate in this mission to prevent 
the player of gaining access to anything that's a constructor, at least until quite a bit into the game. So they shouldn't immediately be able to access anything. Or should they? All armada constructors will be disabled so that the AI is really only going to build attacking units. Yeah, everything has to be disabled here. The beaver, the podger, the construction vehicle. Okay, well that's enough placement for now. I showed you how to do dead things. We are going to return to this. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, now we have to export a lot of this stuff and actually make our scenario script. You can pretty clearly see that um, this is going to be very difficult for the player. It's a hard challenge. So what are the things that we don't want the um, just to be in the loadout? Anything that you don't want to be in the loadout, except for obviously don't self-destruct the commanders because then you'll lose the game and it'll exit. But you obviously want to self-destruct the labs right here because you don't want these to show up in the loadout. You also want to destruct, self-destruct with Control-D the construction aircrafts because you also don't want those in the layout, but um, you can remove those manually as well. So I'm just going to, it's easier to hunt for them and disable them from here. Okay, once you're done, once you feel you're ready with this layout, you can, um, yeah, it's very important to not exit the game, keep the game running. Uh, we don't want this construction aircraft. Do we have more of these? I don't know. Well, we'll check that later on. So what you want to do now is once you have your entire layout, is you go slash Lua UI. Let me move the screen so it's more visible. Slash Lua UI. Um, first off, we dump features. With dump features, it's going to um, dump the location of all features into the info log. And we also want to Lua UI dump units. So what this is going to do is it's going to dump the placement of every single unit and every single feature that's currently visible on the map. It's also going to dump, for example, <coughs> features or geo events. It's going to dump those trees. If this map had any, it would also dump those. OK, <coughs> once we've done that, let's open up the info log. The info log is in your beyond all reason folder in the data folder. You have an info log.txt. Let's open this up. Open this with Notepad++. Let's, we don't need that for now. And we have this large info log.txt. And um, if we scroll to the bottom of it, we see the results of our, well, dumping. <coughs> we have, these are the names of the individual units that have been dumped. And if we scroll up, we see that we've built a lot of, you know, fortification walls and all kinds of stuff. Um, and we see that we also have the individual features. Now, note that the individual features, the, you can also specify these manually, but it's just so much easier to do it in-game. They all have their name, they all have their X, Y, and Z positions, their rotations, if they are rotated, the scale is should be one, but it's not used. And <clears throat> they have a very important tag here, resurrect as. Now, resurrect as has to be the unit name of the unit that you want this unit to be resurrected as, trivially. So if, for example, we had an arm pit bolt that we want the player to be able to resurrect, as an arm pit bolt, then we just copy paste that here and just call it arm pit bolt. Right? Okay, so let's create the scenario script file. So, as I've said, all of the scenarios are available right here in, Chobby, in the um, Chobby repo. So you can use these to base your own off of. So, where should you put these files? <clears throat> now, since I'm running a dev setup, I have them in a little bit different spot. So, I'm going to grab those first. So, I have it in the Chobby, this chobby.std is the same one that's on GitHub. So I go into Lua menu slash config slash game config bar scenarios, and I'm going to base this off scenario 18. So I'm going to copy scenario 18's image and Lua file. I'm going to go back to the data folder and go into the Lua menu slash config slash game config slash bar slash scenarios. If none of these, if any of these don't exist in this path, then create them and copy them here. I'm going to rename this to be scenario 19, and we're going to leave the image alone for now. Let's actually make, make a startup image as well. So what kind of startup image should the player have? This looks like a nice startup image. I'm going to hide the UI, and um, note that the approximate image size is 3. Uh, let's take this aircraft away from this nice glory shot. 
and we're going to probably use this as a starting image. Actually, let's um, rearrange a couple of these units so that the player gets a better view of them, of, so that the player has a better idea of what he's going to start off with. Let's also center the Goliath in the view because it's going to be the Goliath and the Diplomats are going to be the two units that to really, really matter in this game. So this is going to be our starting base. Let's hit F12 to make a screenshot. Let me move the mouse cursor out of the way. F12 to make a screenshot. So how do we use this screenshot? Well, all we have to go is we go into our data folder, screenshots, copy the last one, go back to this uh, scenarios folder, paste this here. Well, let's edit it. So let's make it approximately one three to one ratio hmm. kind of like kind of like that hit file let's crop it edit crop the selection and um, save it yes save it yes replace it and we're going to re rename it um, in this case Scenario, scenario, zero nineteen dot jpeg. Okay, let's edit the Lua file. Scenario nineteen dot Lua, which we just copied. You, what you need to do is you need to give each scenario a unique index and number. This is going to be the sort order initially, but it must be equal to the file name number. This scenario nineteen dot Lua. So, the index number in this case, let's increment. It's going to be number nineteen. Let's give it a scenario ID. This scenario ID is used internally for scoring and make it kind of descriptive. So we're going to call this uh, Glacier um, Goliath 018, just as a index. So a version is uh, a version is a way to, if you may do a major change to a scenario, then if you can change the version string here, and that'll reset the scores for that version of the scenario. It needs a title. Well, obviously, we're going to call it David versus Goliath because we have a Goliath. You keep your author here. You can mark it as new so that it shows up in the Chabi as new. And we're going to guess change the path to the image to scenario 19. Now, what we want here is we have a flavor text right here. Let's see what kind of flavor text we have. Uh, flavor text is going to be drawn over the image. Uh, what's, what does the flavor text look like? Let's see if I can go back to lobby and show you guys in the lobby. So if we go into scenarios, let's say we have um, back from the dead, the flavor text is just going to be the text that's printed over the image. So the flavor text, uh, we'll figure something out for, his, for this one. Let's give it a little tip. Take a look at the map. So then you can write the summary. The summary should be the summary is the is this text right here. And you also have a briefing, like a full briefing, which is this one on the left. Now I mean on the bottom. So on the bottom you should definitely give as much information as possible to the player so that they can and also you can give them tips and give them um, scoring info and to give them difficulty info and all kinds of things. But um, I'm not going to fill those out for now because um, uh, this takes a while to write some nice text for it. Note that in Lua, if you want a large multi line string, you wrap it in double brackets. Okay, so we have our image path. What else, what other variables do we have? after this briefing text. We have a map file name. Now what map file are we running on currently? Well, we go back into skirmish and we were on Glacier Pass 1.2. So we type in Glacier Pass 1.2. That's our map. Now if we want the player's commander icon to be drawn anywhere, we want it, for example, in scenarios, we have it drawn here in the top right corner. But in our current map, we want them drawn in the bottom right, maybe 80% right here. So we're going to give him an 80% X and an 80% Y. This is just purely visual. 
So how long should this scenario take? This is actually a little bit more difficult than the previous one. It should take 1800 seconds, that's 30 minutes. Par resources, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and how difficult is this scenario? I think this is going to be more difficult than the previous one, but we'll see. Actually, yeah, let's keep it. And there's a default difficulty. That's going to be um, what the initial default difficulty starts off with. Now, what is difficulty? What kind of control do you have in a scenario of, of over difficulty? Now, there are two values in each of these tables. It, obviously, it has a name uh, that specifies it. This is a table of tables. And um, so difficulty is, is a table in itself, and each entry is a table inside of that. And th these keys are the name of it, like, for example, in beginner. And um, this is the player handicap. Now, player handicap means uh, it's a value. Handicap can go from minus 100 to plus 100. And this specifies the amount of resource bonus in percent that that player will get. Obviously, the player getting any resource bonus in any of these is pretty is not too sensible because uh, the player isn't going to be making units and resources. But um, we can change how much resources the AI gets. Now, in this case, in the beginner level, the AI is going to get 50% less resources than it would regularly would from its wind farms and its um, and its metal extractors. At the novice difficulty level, is going to get 25% less. And obviously, at brutal difficulty, um, the enemy handicap is going to be 100%, so it's going to get 100% extra, so it's going to get double the resources. So allowed sides. Now, this can be a table. So for example, if you want the player to be able to choose multiple sides, you can tell them that the, you also want, you can allow them to play Cortex. But in this case, we're only going to allow the player to choose Cortex. The victory condition, this is just text. Um, and this, but it should be reflected in the start script. So we want to say, kill all enemy commanders. And um, the loss condition is loss of all of your units. Now, obviously, the player is going to you know, quit before he loses all of his units, before he loses his base, when he loses his more, more, most important stuff, then he's going to restart the, the game, but he should win when he's able to kill all the enemy commanders. Now, unit limits. So for unit limits, you want to limit the... So any um, unit name right here, you can get the unit names from the uh, Beyond All Reason website as well. So for example, if you want to disable, let's say, in... I want to disable an Armada construction bot. Then I click on the Armada construction bot. And right here in the URL, we know that this is the unit name. It's um, Arm CK, Arm Construction K bot. So we're going to want to disable those. So this does require a little bit of critical thinking and testing later on to make sure that you've disabled everything that you wanted to. So what are we going to disable? We're going to disable all construction bots, all Arm construction stuff. So we want arm construction K bot to be the unit limit is this is the max number that the um, that anyone can build of these. So if you set it to one, then a total of one can be built. If there's already one in the uh, on the team, then you can't build any more. You can resurrect more, but you can't build anymore. So no arm construction K-bots, no arm construction vehicles, no arm, oh, which one is the uh, amphibious one? Armada vehicles, I don't even know the name of the amphibious one. It's called, we don't want them to build any podgers either. Arm MLV, yeah, arm MLV equals zero. Um, which one, this one is the beaver. It's called arm beaver surprisingly we don't want it to be able to build what else so if all construction bots are disabled let's return to the game then can he conceivably can you get anything maybe the commander can juke something out here so i'm also going to disable the construction of labs so that the commander doesn't juke anything out from his little prison so no arm lab equals zero no arm vehicle plant equals zero. No arm aircraft plant. No arm hovercraft plant. No arm floating hovercraft plant. Not that it's a danger, but um, you never know the creativity of some players. So that pretty much limits him to just making units. The AI is just going to be able to... Oh, and I also don't want the AI to be able to build any rectors. Arm Rector, zero. 
because otherwise the AI would um, go out and reclaim the wrecks that we placed for the player to play with before the player could get to them. Okay, so those are pretty much all the stuff that we need to disable. So, okay, next comes the loadout. So what you need to do is, this my option do stuff, this doesn't do anything, this is, uh, that should be commented out. This is just a test option. So scenario ID, you need to pass this scenario ID into the scenario options. This is uh, just so that scoring can be kept. This is disable faction picker. So this allow this dis disables the faction picker widget um, that when it starts the game, so that you have to start you have to set your faction at the very start, so you can't switch factions and juke the game out. Okay, unit loadout. Now I'm going to delete the previous one from here. Delete the previous one, and I'm also going to delete the previous feature loadout. Note that these are tables. Once again, these are tables of multiple units. So feature loadout, that's pretty simple. We go to our infolog.txt. Um, we have it right here. And let's fish out our stuff. This is all our features. All features on the map. Let's paste these in into the feature loadout. Note that you don't want to keep this <coughs> timing text in the uh, infolog. Just keep the names. And let's tabulate it nicely. OK, what do we not want out of these? Well, obviously, we don't want the two geo events to be recreated, so no, we don't need those. Everything else we want, and everything else we actually wanted to be resurrectable, so we're going to have to fill out the resurrectable tags right here. This is a little bit involved, but um, uh, if you actually kill a unit and leave the wreck in this um, in this setup mode, then the resurrect as tag will be correctly set, but it's very difficult to do that, so it's much easier to place. Let's say we also had an arm radar that's going to be resurrected. We also have an arm pit bull. We also have multiple arm pit bulls. We also hid an arm mine laying vehicle for the player to discover and to use. And we also have a dead geothermal vent that the player can resurrect if he so desires. Okay, let's look at, take a look at the units. So we take the units that were dumped into our info log. Well, there's a lot of them actually. So let's copy these out, paste them into the unit loadout, and also use, you know, in Notepad++ you can hold Alt to um, block select text like this and delete this stuff from it. Okay. So we've deleted this stuff. Okay, we definitely don't want our, what do we, so there's a stuff, a couple of stuff here that we do not want. We don't want this commander to be here, and we don't want this commander to be here. We only want this commander to remain. So we know that this is a Cortex commander that's in Team 1, and this is also a Cortex, this is an Armada commander. So we are Team 1. Note that this is the Armada commander that corresponds to this one. We know from the position, you can see in the bottom left corner, it says the position right here. Position is at uh, 4,000, 3,000 elevation, 1,000. So we can be pretty sure that it's this guy. So we do not want him. We can. We have two options. We can either comment it out, or okay. We don't want any construction aircraft either. Actually, we want to make sure we don't have any construction aircraft. Yep. And so you put Control F3 to look for more of them. Do we want? There's another Armada commander here, the one that we want to keep. And this Cortex commander is one that we don't want to keep. Where is this Cortex commander? Ah, it's this one. It's this guy. We don't want him. So let's also comment him out. So let's make one take one, take one more look at stuff that we might not want in the units. It's usually the construction aircraft that we used to... Um, to build the stuff. So we used a Cortex construction aircraft, a Cortex advanced construction aircraft, Cortex and Armada construction aircraft, and Armada advanced construction aircraft. Let's comment those out. It should be, it would be nicer if I searched for them. Control F, Arm, ACA. Nope, none of those. Core, ACA. Nope, none of those. Core construction aircraft. 
Nope, none of those. There was only one of them left? Well, then I did a good job of removing them. Is there anything else that needs to be removed? Mm, this seems pretty fine. We have the spy, we have the pit bulls, we have the flak, a lot of fortification walls. Okay, I think we're done with that. Let's tabulate it nicely. Just so that it looks good. And now comes the hard part. Okay, so we have a start script. We copied it over from the previous one. You need to understand the concept in um, bar between teams and alley teams. Now, an alley team is what you regularly refer to as a team of players, multiple players playing in the same team. A regular team is just a, a player. But uh, the reason for that is that you can have multiple players on a single regular team with that because they can share units. So let's specify some stuff here. Do we know that team one, since we gave team one, you know, the, that was our enemy, we gave them some stuff that was that had the side that was by default cortex, but it's actually our motto. It has the enemy handicap and it has a color. I want it to be blue, so oh, I'm just gonna clear that and make it nice and a nice light, light blue. Actually, this is pretty dark blue. Um, so this is going to be the player. The player, since the player is playing Cortex, should definitely be red. Okay, this are the scenario options. This Everything that's uh, shown with a double underscore is going to be filled out by the start script generator from our previous parameters. So everything that's double underscore, so for example, enemy handicap, player handicap, these are all going to be from the difficulty selector. So we also have our start rectangles. Now the start rectangles is something that, um, well, we need to set up a little bit. Start rectangles are indexed from the top left. Um, but since we don't want the, these are from a previous game, it's good to note, let me save this, it's good to note that um, in our info log, we actually have the start script that we used to start this skirmish battle. Now, when you're creating a scenario completely from scratch, you can also use this skirmish setup to create a battle, start it, and then if you look into your info log and scroll up quite a bit, you're going to find the start script that's been dumped. Well, it's, uh, it does take a while to find it. Right here. This is our start script that we used that we used to start the skirmish game. And the reason we know that it is this is because it's on the Glacier Pass map. And we know that we also set up these start rectangles. That was very clever of us. So we can just take the start rectangles for Alley Team 0. Alley Team 0 is the... Which one? Alley Team 0 is, is us. That's the player in this case. I know that um, since the start rectangles are go from 0 to 1 and the top left corner, so... Let's replace those for Alley Team 0. This is what we want for the start rectangle for them. And for the other Alley Team, for the enemy Alley Team, it doesn't really matter um, to have the start rectangle since the loadout, this loadout, overrides any starting units, like commanders, <clears throat> that you might get. So if the, you're not going to get a commander, but you are going to be given the option to look around before the game starts. Okay, what else do we need to change in this scenario? We're going to use a Barbarian AI. That's the same one. If you were to fish out from the info log, then right here you'd see that the AI is a null AI right here in the previous one, the one that we started as a testing, but in the live version that we want a Barbarian AI. And it can even have a name as well. We can give it uh, any name we wish. And instead of it being right here called, oh, it gets replaced, Epoch. Okay, then you don't have to change this. Everything else is pretty automatic. Like you have to make sure that things like player name is here. You have to make sure that the game type is bar version. This is going to fill in the correct version of bar that the player currently has. So when we started it in our regular script, we saw that the um, that the skirmish generator gave us the correct version. But this is going to be filled in if we just go underscore underscore bar version underscore underscore. Everything else is fine. You can play around with the start position type. You can make it completely fixed. But um, there's documentation on start position type somewhere in this file. I think we're actually done with the scenario. 
So let's give it a save. I think we're done with it. And let's give it a test and see if things work at all. So I think we can exit this. We can um, leave this scenario. If we click the scenarios here, I don't think it's going to be loaded up. Nope, we need to restart the... Uh, we need to restart Beyond All Reason, and we're going to start it. We don't need to update for this, so it starts rather quickly. We go into single player scenarios. Uh huh. So whenever your scenario fails to load because of any syntax error or anything, it's going to be displayed right here. So it says right here that in line two, there's an unexpected symbol there equal in line two. Wow, that's pretty much the very start. So what did we screw up? Ah, there's an extra equal symbol here. So you close the lobby um, and then start the lobby again. Obviously, we don't need updates. No, I don't want to reload it. So we go into single player scenarios, and it's called, called David versus Goliath, and it was quite difficult. So right here, here's our scenario. We have our flavor text. We have our flavor image. We have our map, mini map image, and we even have our little commander right here in the correct position. Most of the stuff seems correct. There's a lot of unit limits. These are automatically generated from the unit limit set. So it says construction box disabled, construction vehicle for arm armada is disabled. Let's actually start the scenario and see if we screwed up anywhere. I'm going to check the dev discord to see if anyone asks any questions. In the meanwhile, All right, I forgot to mention that you can do a slash save game in game as well to save it. And um, that means that allows you to tweak it later on easily. I forgot to show you that, but you can do in game, you can do slash save game and then load it from the lobby. And that to progress when you're creating the scenario. It's actually very helpful. everything. Sorry, this computer is being a bit slow today. Is it? This is way too slow. I think I think I crashed something somewhere. Yeah, that definitely looks like I crashed something somewhere. Yes, reload it. What did I crash? Nope, I didn't crash. It just took a while to load. And we see that we have our loadout right here exactly as we placed it. Excellent. We have enemy walls here so they don't get complained or anything. We don't see those yet because they're not in line of sight. Okay. Do we have the wrecks that we placed? Hidden here. We have our hidden wreckings. Excellent. Do we have our fleas that we hid? Should be hidden somewhere here. Those are pretty good at hiding them, so yeah, here they are. And we have a mine layer vehicle hidden somewhere as well. Right here. Good. Let's, um... Let's click somewhere, ready up, see if it works. Okay, let's try to see if we can resurrect any of these wrecks. Like, um, I'm going to select the necros to make sure that, yes, these are resurrectable. The cursor is flashing to indicate that. And, uh, well, we can roll out. I'm going to set the uh, radar cart and the jammer cart to guard this Goliath. And roll out. I'm going to take these fleas, turn, I mean these spies, turn on cloak. You should have enough energy. Yes, you definitely have enough energy to keep them cloaked. Interesting how the energy storage isn't increasing our energy storage. That's good to know. Let's bug. You can see our Goliath is having fun crushing all of this. 
and let's see if our AI is doing what it should be doing. In order to do that, we're going to cheat. You cheat your scores don't get saved, so don't worry about that. Slash cheat slash global LOS. Let's see if the AI has actually managed to. Where's the lab? Well, if it can't build the lab, then it can't place it during loadout? Oh, that's a new bug. We didn't have that bug before. Could the AI conceivably build a lab? It could, but it couldn't get much done with it anyway. I think, I think loadout disabled that. Wow, that's good to know. I wonder if that's... I wonder if that's going to prevent us from resurrecting our um, resurrection bot. Well, let's clear out the defenses here first and actually try to validate that. Come on, little bots. Try to resurrect this neck erector. I want to see what happens. Okay, that was that was allowed to be resurrected, but these two weren't placed. Vehicle plant. Okay, well, what we can do is um, set their unit limit to one. So arm vehicle plant one, arm lab one. Good. No constructors can be built. Nope, nope, nope. We also want to disable, by the way, arm aircraft plant equals zero. Just, oh, that's already disabled right here. Okay, well, this should prove a difficult challenge for the player, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Let's see if I can also resurrect the fleas. Yes, fleas can be resurrected, and we have our nice little resurrected uh, reser right here. And, yeah. So I'm going to save this and restart the script. Just to make sure that so I had an arm VP that didn't get placed. Control F3, arm VP should have been placed by the layout, but it didn't because it was limited. That's strange. I thought that you could just limit the additional construction. That might be some gadgets fighting because I know that this worked previously. David versus Goliath, start the scenario. And it's a lot of stuff being placed, especially because of all the walls. Those get placed individually as units. You can use dead walls as features instead if you really wish to, but it's, it's no major difference. sure you have you know your graphics options turned up a little bit just to make it not look like complete garbage you can paint over this you can do use whatever you want and as long as the ratio of it the image is approximately three to one you can use anything for your scenario image that can contain anything you 
want. But it's a good idea to keep this, keep it, make it a screenshot from the scenario itself. Okay. We load it up. It's ready. And let's do a quick cheat slash global LOS. Slash cheat slash global LOS. T2 unit detected. Ah, excellent. So it is working indeed. And the AI will immediately start ooh, hammering you with fleas and peewees. And ah, oh, this is going to be hard. Well, at least, you know, you have some reasonable base defenses right here. And you can roll out with all your stuff. Okay, well, I think um, that we've covered most of the basic things about making a scenario with a different, with any kind of layout. And as you can see, you can do that in approximately an hour, plus as long as it takes you to watch this video. So with that, I'd like to thank you for watching today, and uh, have a great day.